Are you bitter and angry? Have you been growing up reflecting in your life? Sad events happen in your life. And you're here seated. Maybe not for our young people, not so much. Or maybe you're experiencing that. You're bitter. You're growing each day bitter, angry. And you don't know kung kanino ka galit. But you're just angry at the world. Angry for no reason or probably for some reason. And you're angry simply because you are a victim. You look at your situations. You're not in good situations. You're suffering. You're in hard life. And you are growing up listening to stories by your parents or your relatives or your brothers and siblings. And they're telling you that, you know, we were nice. We were, our family were good. Your father has good business. But you know, something happened when you were still young. There was this trouble. There was this man or this woman. There was this friend who caused all the trouble. That's why we are bankrupt. That's why we, were, we are like this. And that's why you are so less privileged today. And you were growing up thinking of this man you have not met before. The face of this person. And you start to become bitter. You're angry. Because none of this was your fault. And you're saying, kung hindi dahil sa taong yon, o sa nangyaring na yon, hindi sana ako nagkaganito. Or maybe we're saying, you're in the office and you were fired or you were put in a difficult situations because of somebody else. You were just a victim. And you look into your heart and say, none of these things, Lord, is because of my wrongdoing. And because you entertain those feelings, you start to become bitter and angry, revengeful. You start to, to fantasize in your mind how to take revenge or probably be afraid or you're, you're, you're fearful of that person. Maybe you're in hiding right now and you're evading the issue. Or maybe you're just running away and you just hope and pray that that day will not come. Young people, maybe you are seated here and you're saying, Pastor Boos, I cannot relate to you. Or maybe you have a friend or in school that caused trouble to you. And you know in your heart you have not done anything wrong. The title of our conversation today is Pay It Forward. I'm talking about the story of David and Mephibosheth. If you still remember, I stood here several Sundays ago. I talked about royal love, the story of Jonathan and David, how Love for both men is possible. Love for a fellow human being, even if men to men without any malice, not sexual, but the love of a friend was possible. And we have seen it in the lives of David and Jonathan. You see, we have all uh, heard about the hostility. And remember the message of the Lord that enmity is powerless in the presence of love. That David suffered a lot. Because of his father-in-law, Saul, King Saul of, e of Israel. So I now invite all of us to enter into the story as I unfold to you and I navigate through the text today. David, just to give a background, remember the last time when Saul was running after David, went to the camp, the compound and the house of the prophet Samuel. And we have seen there that enmity was indeed powerless because he was struck by the Holy Spirit, by the Spirit of God came upon him so powerfully that, they, that King Saul lied down there for the whole day, day and night, prophesying while David was fleeing. And for the last time, he met Jonathan. And again, they made a covenant. That time, unless I want to enter your imagination now, when the last time they met, they saw each other, they bowed and they made their covenant to each other. That day, they did not know who will end up as the next king of Israel. Both of them are heirs of the throne. But none of them knew who would be the next king of Israel. And they made this covenant and say, whatever happens, David, Jonathan, I made this commitment to you that I will take care of you and your descendants. Remember that time? And they bowed down and they embraced and they, they kissed and they parted ways. And from that time on, David lived a fugitive life. Read your second Samuel. He was being pursued by Saul, the king of Israel, because he was a threat 
He was the anointed successor of the throne. Many years pass. Many years pass. Now, as I enter into the story of David and Mephibosheth, there is one very, very glaring truth. When I was reading it, I said, Lord, I will stand at YMCA on Sunday. What is the one thing you want me to share to the church? What is the one truth if all of us will leave this congregation this morning and we will all ride our bus home? If there's one very, very important truth or principle that I want every one of us to really keep in our hearts, this is the one glaring truth that you will see as we go along with the text. God's goodness is the favor that we receive on the merit of another. I will show you this in the story of David and Mephibosheth. God's goodness is the favor we receive on the merit of another. We will understand that now when we say God is good, we don't just say all the time. You will be able to understand God's goodness from the perspective of God. Now, who was Mephibosheth? Who was Mephibosheth? Just for the information, para all of us are on the same page. Who was Mephibosheth? Mephibosheth, according to 2 Samuel chapter, chapter 4, verse 4, when David was already running as a fugitive, there were many battles that happened. King Saul of, of Israel started to decline. Why? The presence of God left him. The Holy Spirit left. The Spirit of God left. And the anointing and the favor of God on King Saul left, left him and abandoned him. So his kingdom was on, the, on a decline. Many battles happened. And one of the battles that happened in Mount Gilboa, he was killed with Jonathan. Jonathan, the, he was there with his father fighting the enemy of Israel. And they were killed by the enemy. Jonathan and Saul. And that news reached the palace. And here comes 2 Samuel. Mephibosheth was the son of Jonathan. Now, for the first time, may anak pala si Jonathan. Ang pangalan si Mephibosheth. Mephibosheth was five years old during that time. Five years old. And the nurse of Mephibosheth, because of the news that your father and your, grand your grandfather was killed in the battle, there was this fear because during the ancient Near East time, the enemy would come to the palace and slaughtered all, especially the family of the royal family of the king. He had a nurse, no name. The nurse picked pick up Mephibosheth out of the panic and in terror because of the news that Jonathan and Saul was killed in battle. So the nurse picked pick Mephibosheth up uh, as a young boy and ran and fled taking care of this boy. And when he was, she was running, she tripped and Mephibosheth fell and that made him crippled both legs for the rest of his life. From that time on, Mephibosheth with the nurse were already in hiding in Lodibar. You will find out later as I go through the text. So, tinago niya po si Mephibosheth from that time on in fear because the whole family will be slaughtered. That's, he's the only living heir of the royal lineage of King Saul. Now, I want you to enter. Let's enter into Mephibosheth's shoe. You're five years old. During that time, wala pang medical advances that we have today. Siguro natag-anan siya nung nurse. I don't know what happened. That both legs of Mephibosheth was, was affected and he was a lame, growing, a lame boy growing and nobody knew about him where he was being hid by his nurse. Dahil alam nila, anytime, the enemy or the next king of Israel, they will always look for the family and the relatives of the former king and they will slaughter them for fear of any threat to overcome the throne. Diba? Usually, ganun eh. So, baka, baka mag-lead ng revolution yan. So, patay na lahat. He was growing up. Mephibosheth was saying, none of this is my fault. None of this was my fault. I was just a victim. When they were in exile, I believe many of them fled the household of King Saul, were hiding. And in the ancient Near East, the exile community, to maintain their dignity and respect, what they would do po, they would tell the story and retell the story of their importance and their significance, the, the role that they played in the history of the kingdom. So they will always tell the story, and usually po sa gabi, 
maybe they would sit around the fire and they would tell the story of the significance of their community before. Now, I can imagine Mephibosheth being carried by the nurse, by his nurse, and he would hear from five years old onward how he was a royal boy, a prince, but because of what happened, and so on and so forth. And all those stories, he would grow up saying, this is not my fault. I'm a victim here. Why am I lame? Why am I hiding in this desert? Why am I hiding in Lodivar? It's unfair. Maybe... Maybe, maybe Mephibosheth was saying, this is all unfair. I have not done anything wrong. I don't know even these people. And in the story, I would imagine every day, every night in the story, the name David would surface out. You know what happened? There was this boy who killed the Philistine giant. And this boy was a threat to your lawless throne. And because of this David, there was this turmoil in the family. And you know, maybe he would start to blame Siguro si David, if it, was not, if it was not for David, hindi sana namatay ang tatay ko at ang lolo ko. Maybe that, that thought was brewing in the heart of Mephibosheth. It was because of David. He's the one to be blamed. And he would hear the news. Now David is the one re- reigning as the king. King of Israel. And can you imagine Mephibosheth? Halo-halo na po ng galit, takot. Why, why are you hiding me in Lodivar? Yeah, because if David found out that you're alive, he will kill you because you belong. We all know how your grandfather, your lolo, did to David. This is the time for him to revenge. So maybe these stories were going on. Sometimes the stories affect us. Diba? Minsan, kinikwento sa atin, alam mo yung tiyo mo, salbahay yung tiyo mong yun eh. So hindi mo naman kilala si tiyo, galit na galit ka na. Nung pagdating galing Saudi, may magandang regalo sa'yo, biglang, ha? Mabait pala si tiyo. Misang ganun, di ba? So the story was going on. And Mephibosheth was brewing in his heart. If it had not been for David, there would have, not, there would have been no accident and no lifelong crippling and disability. It was David's fault. Mephibosheth was five. Pass forward natin. Pass forward 15 to 20 years pass. Malaki na po si Mephibosheth. Pero he was being carried, or maybe with the crutches, because he was crippled for both legs. And I was afraid maybe his heart was also crippled with fear and bitterness and anger. One day, ito na, ito na po yung kinatatakutan ni Mephibosheth. One day, all of, out of the blue in Lodivar, in a remote place, they heard these marching soldiers with the chariots. And the soldiers were looking for a boy or a man named Mephibosheth. And there was this knock at the door. I don't know if it's morning or evening. One dreadful day came and Mephibosheth was already expecting that every day of his life he was hiding. And a knock from the door. Knock at the door and the rumors would say, someone is looking for Mephibosheth. And when Mephibosheth opened the door, here comes the soldiers the royal guards, and say, you are being summoned by the king. Can you imagine the fear and the dread and the terror? Now I am not just lame for life. Now I will be sentenced. Maybe the king, I don't know, maybe this is going on in the imagination of Mephibosheth. Maybe he doesn't want to kill me here. Maybe he wants to kill me personally. Maybe he wants to draw his sword and personally kill me. Maybe these thoughts were running in his mind. Or maybe he wanted me in prison for life. I don't know kung gaano kalayo ang Lodibar. But it is across the Jordan River to the east. Imagine he was brought, I don't know if he was put on a saddle on a donkey or a horse, or was this chariot. It was a long journey. Imagine the, the pain and the agony of Mephibosheth. Maybe siguro nakita niya may clip, tumalo na lang kaya ako siyan para hindi ko na makita si David. This is the first time he would meet the king and he is dreadful of that face-to-face meeting with the king. People in his community knew how David was mistreated by his grandfather. So alam niya, nabibilang na ang aking oras. Mephibosheth was imagining this will end in a bloody sentence. Mephibosheth was shaking in his heart and in his life. Now imagine this. The chariots arrived, the palace in Jerusalem. And he was being carried by all the soldiers. 
to be brought in front of the king, David. Try to imagine this. You see what's happened now? Let me jump into the middle of the chapter 9. We will jump into the middle of the story. So when he came to David, now listen, listen to this. When he came to David, maybe he was being ushered by the soldiers. When he came to David, Mephibosheth bowed low to the ground. Maybe shaking later on. You'll see that. In deep respect, then he was surprised when David said to him, Greetings, Mephibosheth. And he said, I am your servant. In translation, what David was saying, Relax, Mephibosheth. Everything will be all right. Can you imagine the words? He was named. For you to be named by the king is different. He was called Mephibosheth. Hindi siya tinawag na, hey, subject. What's your name? Hindi ba? Or papasok pa lang siya, sinibat na siya, that's what your grandfather did to me. He could have done that. But he was surprised. Later on, as we go back to the I, I, ko po yung text para malaman niyo po yung ano, I will jump from one text to another but it's still the same passage the translation is Mephibosheth relax everything will be alright now there are three four things that I want you to put in your mind now in, rela- in relationship to Mephibosheth Mephibosheth did not know he was not expecting he did not know and even in his wildest imagination did not expect that when he was summoned by the king, David, that he was there to be loved by David. Wala siyang ka-idea-idea, mga kapatid. I'll show you that later. Walang ka-idea-idea si Mephibosheth that he was there in the presence of the king not to be judged, not to be sentenced, not to be revenged, but to be loved by the king. What Mephibosheth did not know was that he was standing there in front of a different kind of king. That's not the kind of David that he was imagining. I don't know, somehow his mind was polluted when he was growing up that this David is cruel, that this David is running after your father's throne, na siya yung gusto maging king. So hindi niya alam yon. that he did not know, he had no idea that David will be a different kind of king. Mephibosheth did not also know that David and his, grand, and his father Jonathan made a covenant. He did not also know that. Because it happened between David and Jonathan personally the last time he saw Jonathan. He did not know anything about the covenant and the promise. And Mephibosheth also did not know chapter 9, verse 1. Now, let me bring you back to chapter 9, verse 1. Hindi niya po alam kung bakit siya pinatawag. Now, let's go. One day, in chapter 9, verse 1, David after securing the borders of Israel, he is now the new king of Israel, ruling the first time he would sit and to rule as the king of the kingdom. Imagine ang ginawa ni David. After securing the borders of Israel, one day David asked, is anyone in Saul's family still alive? Usually, pag nagtanong ang hari ng ganon, if the king asks like that, in the ancient Near East, the king kasi is interested to, to kill all that belong to the former family so that there is no possibility of, of uh, revolution. Papatayin lahat eh. Ganun po ang usapan nung panahon na yan. So maybe the servants were expecting. Now, David is asking, may natitira pa bang pamilya? Kaapu-apuhan? Itong si Haring Saul? Alam nilang lahat kung gaano tinrato si David ni Saul. Maybe sabi ng sir, maybe the servants were saying, nako patay. David now will get back and revenge the bad things that he received from King Saul. But look at this. Is anyone in Saul's family still alive? Anyone, hindi sila, I mean, anyone who deserved, anyone to whom I can show kindness for Jonathan's sake. Wow! Nung binasa ko to, sabi ko, yes, Lord, goodness, God's goodness is the favor we receive on the merit of another. Now, slowly, you will understand that. Here comes David in all power and authority I have the right and I have the chance and I have the, cho- uh, the choice to do good or evil. What will I do? I am now in the position. I have the convenience and the comfort to do it. What will I do as the new king of Israel? Is there anyone left that I can show kindness for Jonathan's sake? It has nothing to do with the person. Gagawin ko itong magandang bagay na ito, hindi dahil sa taong yon, kundi dahil sa kaibigan kong si Jonathan on the merit of another. 
what David is doing here, he's paying it forward. I don't know if I was one of the servants of King of David, I was saying, Are you sure, King? Hindi mo ba nakalimutan mo na ba yung ginawa sa'yo ng pamilyang yan? Kung papaano ka sinibat? Papaano ka pinapatay? Hinabol ka pa sa cave. Are you sure? Look at the next verse. He summoned a man named Ziba, or Ziba, who had been one of Saul's servants. Sabi niya, are you Ziba? Yes, sir. Yes, my king. The king. Yes, sir, I am Ziba. The king then asked him, is anyone still alive from Saul's family? If so, I want to show God's kindness to them. Hindi lang isa. Kung meron ba, pamilya. Hindi lang isa. I want to show kindness. Gusto kong gumanti ng utang na loob ko kay Jonathan. I want to show kindness, God's kindness to them. And Ziba replied, Yes, sir. Yes, my king. One of Jonathan's sons is still alive. He is crippled in both feet. Now, what is the writer telling us? What is the writer of Samuel telling us? What is Ziba trying to tell King David? He was saying probably to David, Sir, uh, maybe Ziba was coming from the perspective that as the new king, he would annihilate and kill all the families that belongs to the former uh, uh, pre, uh, king. Maybe Ziba saying, Sir, merong isa, pero nothing to worry, sir. Crippled, sir, lame. Nothing to worry. He's not a threat to you. Maybe that's the reason why he included that. Sir, there's nothing to worry. Because he's crippled both legs. If you read verse 4, David did not ask, how crippled is he? Is he strong? How old is he? Hindi. Walang tanong si David. Actually, he asked, where is he? Where is he? And then he said, he's in, he's in Lodivar. He's hiding, sir, in Lodivar. Now, Lodivar in the Hebrew means without pasture. Lodivar is a place where no agriculture. It's barren. No one would stay in Lodivar. Obviously, Mephibosheth was really hiding and in fear. Who would go to Lodivar and live there? Barren. It's in Lodivar that Mephibosheth was hiding in fear and growing up with bitterness in his heart, maybe about to revenge for, for David, or maybe he was so afraid and dreadful of what David would do to him. Then David said, bring him. Ziva, I want you to bring that son to me. Go. That's the time all the soldiers went to Lodivar and knock, knock, knock. Are you Mephibosheth? Yes. And now I'm bridging down the story. And hindi ito alam ni, hindi alam ni Mephibosheth ito. Mephibosheth did not know that David summoned him to be loved. Mephibosheth was entering the presence of the king in fear, expecting a blood, a bloody sentence or maybe imprisonment. He had no idea that he was standing before a different kind of king. You know, I admire David. If you and I are in a, in a position of authority, or we have the influence, will we rule with love or vengeance? If it's now our turn, and we have the means and the capacity to do it, would we use our time to revenge or to show kindness? Lalo na kapag natayo na yung nakaka, nakakalamang, nakakaasenso ng konti, tayo ba ay gaganti sa masamang bagay na tinanggap natin nung tayo lumalaki? O gagamitin natin yung ating pagkakataon na ito na pagpapala ng Diyos na gumawa ng mabuti sa halip na gumawa ng masama? Find him! Bring him to me! Now, let me give you back verse 6. When he came to David, he bowed down and deep respect because that was that was the feeling of Mephibosheth. Relax, Mephibosheth. Everything will be all right. And verse 7 is crucial. And I want you to really look at verse 7 very carefully. Don't be afraid. Why? Maybe Mephibosheth was shaking. He was crippled in both legs. He was bowing down so low, expecting an axe or a spear or a judgment from the king. He was shaking in fear and in terror. I was growing up hearing this name. There is no reason why David would not kill me because of what my father and my grandfather did. He had no idea of the goodness and the friendship of Jonathan. Maybe. 
Don't be afraid, David said. I intend to show kindness to you because of my promise to your father, Jonathan. Wow! Can you imagine a big scale, a load of boulders were, were released from the heart of Mephibosheth? Maybe David was lifting up his head. Look at me, Mephibosheth. I intend to show kindness to you on the merit of your father, not because of you. Because if I look at you, I look at you, you can be a threat to my throne. But I chose not to operate in, in vengeance and in hate. I chose to operate and rule based on love and honor and loyalty. Maybe that's what David was trying to say. I will give you all the property that once belonged to your grandfather's soul, and you will eat here with me at the king's table. Can you imagine? In obscurity, he was hiding in Lodivar. And all of a sudden, he was promoted and even considered as part of the royal family. You will eat at my table. Mephibosheth. All of a sudden, all the blame. None of this was my fault. Everything was erased. Mephibosheth, I will give you. You are a one-day millionaire. You won a jackpot today, Mephibosheth. I will give to you all the properties of your grandfather. And not only that, Mephibosheth, you will eat here with me at my table. If you were Mephibosheth, what would you feel? Now, God's goodness is the favor that we receive on the merit of another. Can you not see the gospel here? Can you not see the good news here? Now, we were supposed to be killed and sentenced to death. But God, our King, has forgiven us and restored and blessed us. You know the word kindness here? Let's have a little Hebrew study. The word kindness here is kesed. The word kindness or love or goodness in this verse in the Hebrew is kesed. Kesed is larger than the word love. Larger. That's why they could not translate this as mere love. In the Old Testament, in the English translation of every time kesed would appear in the Hebrew Bible, they cannot translate it to love because it's larger than love. They would always describe it with an adjective, loyal love, steadfast love, loving kindness, because it's greater than the word love. It is the love without regard to shifting circumstances. Hormones, hindi siya depende sa feeling or emotional states of the person or personal convenience. I will show kesed to you. That's God's love. That's God's goodness. And that's God's loving kindness. That's kesed is the agape that sent Jesus to the world to die for each one of us. That's the kesed. In translation to the Greek, that's the agape. That's the love that we all swear when we get married. That's the love that we all strive to have in our marriage relationship. When we vow, we said, I would like to proclaim my kesed to you. No matter what happens in the world. No matter what happens in our journey. That's the love that we all strive in our marriage. When we vow, kesed. When I was reading that, I was saying, Lord... We are all recipients of this kesed. The kesed of God. You know the response of Mephibosheth. Mephibosheth bowed down. Would not understand what was going on. Respectfully and exclaimed, Who is your servant that you should show such kesed to a dead dog like me? Look at the way Mephibosheth looked at himself. I am worthless, undeserving, nothing good at all. I am not worthy to be receiving kesed from you. I have nothing but, I don't deserve nothing but, or anything but death. I am an enemy to you. I am a threat to you. Why are you showing me kesed? I was reminded by God in Romans. When we were still sinners, Christ died for us. He did not wait us to become righteous, to, to lay down his life. We were enemies of God. And yet God sent Jesus because of his kesed to the world that anyone would believe in him would not perish but have everlasting life. I am a dog. I am a dead dog like me. David did not even react to what he said. 
You know what, Mephibosheth? Because God said, God's goodness is the favor that you receive on the merit of another. Not because of you. Not because you did something good. Not because you're friendly to me. Mga kapatid, when we receive kesed, when we receive the goodness of God, let us never think, even for a single moment, that because we deserve it. It is always on the merit of Jesus. That's why God is blessing us today. It's on the merit of what Christ has done on the cross. So that not any one of us can boast. And I say, hey, Lord, I go to church. I pay my tithes. I go to mission. I am a good Christian and I'm a leader of the church. That I deserve this. No way. None of our righteousness, which are considered filthy rags in the presence of our Father, merit that kindness of God. We were enemies of God. We were rebellious generations. We were of our father Abraham or father Adam who rebelled against God, disobedient. But God showed kindness to you and me. That's Kesed. David, David said, Ziba, come here. Without paying attention, probably reacting to the words of Mephibosheth. Hindi niya pinatulan yung sinabi ni Mephibosheth. Why? Because David knew, I'm not doing this for you. I am not doing this because of your merit. I am doing this because of the merit of another person that you know of nothing about the promise I gave to your father. When we approach God today, we approach Him not on our merit, but on the merit of Jesus Christ. Sabi ni David, Ziba, give all the properties that belongs to King Saul to this man. And you and your family and your servants will serve Him from now on. Ziva, 15 sons and everything, 20 servants, 35 of them will become the servants of Mephibosheth. Sabi ni Ziba, kami magiging yes, from now on you will farm for him, but your master, Mephibosheth, will eat at my table. Hindi ko ma-imagine ang feeling. I could not imagine the feeling of Mephibosheth, just like you and me. When we receive grace, our rightful response is praise you, God. Forever we will be grateful and last verse. And Mephibosheth was crippled in both legs. Again, inulit-uli. Why do we have to describe? Just to show us that he's not a threat. He cannot do anything for the king. Kailangan pa siyang alalayan to sit at the table. David was committed. Bring Mephibosheth. Every time there's a dinner or food at the table, bring Mephibosheth. And he eat and live in Jerusalem and regularly ate at the king's table. How are you, brothers and sisters? Young people, how are you? If you were David, now, enter into David's shoes. If you were David, what would you do? Now that you have the power and the means, would you use it to manipulate and control? Would you use it to revenge the ill feelings that you were growing up and the bitterness and the anger because of this person? Would we do good to people who are deserving? Or we would, like, would we like be David who would say, is there anyone? Hindi niya sinabing, is there anyone deserving? Is there anyone worthy? No, David asked, is there anyone that I can show kindness to? He was not choosing because God's goodness is the favor that we receive on the merit of another, not because of the person, not because of what we have done. We are all like David. And we are all like Mephibosheth. Young people, remember this. You will grow up when you are already in a position and in the power to do good or evil. Choose and remember God's kesed that you and I receive it not because of what we have done but because of the merit of another. Your takeaway, God's goodness is the favor that we receive on the merit of another. Now, Pastor Boots, now that we know this truth, can you not see the gospel here? Tumanggap tayo ng patawad sa Diyos. We can see the gospel of Jesus Christ here. We all are undeserving. We were all sinners worthy of death penalty. And yet when we face the King, instead of judgment, because of by faith in Jesus Christ, we receive forgiveness and redemption. Think about the love of God in your life. Think about the grace. God's goodness is the favor, favor that we receive on the merit of another, of Jesus Christ. We had our communion a while ago, reminding us that because of the death 
and the resurrection of Jesus, we all enjoy access into the kingdom of God today. We were all granted the right to become His children. Now that we know this, I think the best way that I would encourage this church to live, to apply this truth in our lives is again, pay it forward. There's nothing we can do but to pay it forward. Because we receive God's kesed, let's also give it to others without looking for any deserving people. It is our duty to pay it forward because we too are recipients. Freely we have received the grace of God and freely we share it. You are recipient of God's goodness. Then do good to others. Be like David. Look for Mephibosheth. Look for someone you can do and share God's kesed.